Hello everyone and welcome to Drawloween in October 2017, week 3. Okay guys, so I just wanted to give you all some thoughts about this week and what was going through my mind and just like how I tackled Drawloween this week. So basically this week was a little bit tougher, it was a little bit more difficult and I had to kind of help keep myself motivated and inspired. Um, I was I was into the prompts for the most part. I really enjoyed doing this witch one that you're seeing right now. Um, I feel like I could have done better on it. I feel like the proportions of the eyes were a little off. I feel like I could have really done a much better job on this, but I do like the overall concept. I love the blue-haired witch. I love her eye color. I love the basic coloring of the skin and everything and all of that. So I really did enjoy it and I was kind of experimenting with putting these um, white stars in the sky in the background and stuff or you could even think of it as little magic sparkles or whatever. So. It really just is up to the viewer and what they want to see in it. It almost kind of has a galaxy look in the background too. But I just kind of wanted to talk about how it's very easy to get burnt out at this stage, I feel like, because you've already done two weeks and you're on the third week and you're trying to keep going and you're over halfway there, but you're over halfway there, you know what I mean? So when you're over halfway through with something, there's the positive way to look at it and the negative way to look at it. So the positive viewpoint is you're halfway done. You've done half of the work. You only have halfway left to go. But then the negative way to look at it is you have that same amount of time that you've already spent on it. You have to do all of that again in a way so it really just depends on how you feel about this challenge and I personally do not regret starting this challenge I am very glad that I ended up doing this challenge I'm so happy that I did it there are some cons of course um, it definitely takes up a lot of my time as I spoke about in week two but I am very glad I went through with it because it taught me a lot about my process and how I could better and more efficiently spend my time. So I've really gotten down pat a method for filming every single day, which I never did before. Of course, I don't edit and upload every day because I just don't, I just don't have the ability to do that right now. Maybe one day. But for now, I don't. So the best I could do was record every day and then consolidate them on the weekend into one video. So that's why you see these videos come out every week. Sorry, by the way, that this one's a little bit late. <laughs> um, I did not manage my time very well this weekend, as I thought I did. Um, I had a very productive Saturday. And um, I'm actually recording this voiceover on Sunday morning right now. Um, I had a very productive Saturday, but I could have done better. I could have drank a coffee or something and like pushed through and, and did more, honestly. But, you know, I was tired and I didn't want to drink coffee. I'm trying not to drink as much coffee because it doesn't always agree with me. But anyway, let's talk about this piece. This piece... <laughs> was a struggle. I was out of my quote good paper and um, which is by Kansen. I usually use Kansen watercolor 140 pound paper for these but I was out of it and I had this other lower cost paper only two dollars cheaper mind you and so I'm like I'll try it. I kind of I kind of dig like the color of the tone of the paper. It's a definitely a, a cool toned paper, but I'll tell you what, I will never use this paper for watercolor again. It said on the paper pad that it was for watercolor, but it's it can't be because as you can see I'm zooming in and showing you any little bit of water really damaged the paper 
and I use a lot of water on mine. So that's a no-go for me. And as you can see, the masking fluid, um, I use like a masking fluid marker pen type thing, and it wouldn't really come off very easily. So you try to rub it off, and it just rips the paper even further. So you've got this water damaging the paper, and then you, you're trying to rub off the masking fluid. Another problem I had with that clown piece was it didn't want to dry as quickly as the other paper that I normally use. So long story short, I ended up going to the art supply store um, the next day before I did this pumpkin one so that I could have my preferred Canson paper. And Canson, if you want to sponsor me, that would be fantastic because I use your 140 pound watercolor paper a lot. And I'm thinking about looking for other paper, by the way. Um, I want to get like a 300 pound watercolor paper for watercolor pieces that are more like either larger or more intense amount of water or just like more gallery quality watercolors. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of kind of about to venture into the 300 pound hopefully. Um, I've just heard a lot of good things about it and uh, yeah so that's my next thing I'm going to try to do and I as you can see here I made a skin color or a skin tone palette and it has some orange tones in it too that I used on the pumpkin so I really enjoyed that. I really love paint palettes. I'm a paint palette addict. I don't know how to get help for this. <laughs> Just kidding, but I really am an addict. I don't, I don't like go out and buy a ton of them, but I want to. Like in my brain, I'm like, oh, I want all the palettes. And I'm really addicted to this palette. Um, you can't see it right now in this shop, but you just saw it a second ago. Um, as you can see, I, or I, as you could see, I have two of that same palette, and I just get it at Hobby Lobby, and I think it's just like, it's actually probably one of the cheaper brands. I don't know, it might be Master's Touch or something. I might have to leave that in the description if I remember. I'm very bad at remembering those things, but we'll see. Um, but it's a very simple plastic palette. It has large areas for your paint and it has little small areas for your paint. So typically I like to put my colors, at least in my regular palette that has all the colors, I like to put my regular colors in the smaller things, you know, right from the tube. And then in the larger areas I like to mix the colors. But in the skin tone one, it's pretty much all mixed colors, so I kind of like put my paint from the tubes down and tried to mix them as best I could and create those different skin tones. So yeah, but I'm so excited about that. And I think the palettes are each like only $3 a piece, so they're like super cheap, super worth it. I mean, it's it's not like they're fancy at all, Like, but I just love them because they fold up, they close. If I wanted to, I could throw them in my purse, take them with me. They're so convenient. I just, I can't get enough of them. But this piece you're seeing now <clears throat> is the Creepy Twin prompt. And I know they don't necessarily look like identical twins, but I kind of wanted them to be like yin and yang type of thing. I wanted them to kind of complement each other and, I don't know, just be a little bit different. Almost be opposites, but twins. I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, so that's this piece you're watching now. Um, so let me think. I probably need to update you guys on some things. Um, if you didn't hear in the last video, I plan for my giveaway to take place sometime in November or December. Um, hopefully near the end of November, but we'll see because there's a lot of crazy things going on in my life right now. Family, friends, lives. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I have the prizes kind of ready. I, I just kind of want to look at them again and make sure that's all I want to give away because I might want to give away something else as well. I'm thinking about giving away something from this Dralaline thing. And so I, since they're not all done yet, I don't want to just, you know, I want to wait till I have all these Dralalines done because I may give some of the originals away for free. 
Um, so we'll see. But, um, so what else do I have planned? Well, I do have an announcement coming up, but I am not going to announce it yet. It's going to be announced probably a few weeks from now, probably in November, probably mid-November, something like that. Um, I may announce it earlier. We'll see how it goes. But I just want you guys to be aware that something big is about to happen, and I just... I want you guys to kind of be on the lookout for that so yeah and if you want to hear an update on the secret art project I don't really have anything new going on with the secret art project right now um, I've been kind of looking online at furniture on Craigslist for it but I don't really have anything new that I've bought for it or that I've really got anything to talk about other than I've just been looking at furniture and things. I always keep the lookout for ideas. I always kind of like think about it in the back of my mind. And I know you guys are probably still kind of stumped on what the heck the secret art project is and that's kind of what I want. Like I kind of want it to be something that you all are kind of wondering about because it's kind of part of the charm of the secret art project so yeah um i hope you guys enjoy this video um this final piece is the grumpy owl and i'll just say this is probably my favorite piece that i've done the entire month so far so that's super interesting i did it yesterday so i did it on a saturday and i just I didn't have to rush. I had so much time to create it. I just got to relax, focus on the piece. I was listening to a podcast called Rebelliously Tiny, and it's by Ambivalently Yours, an artist on Instagram. She is really cool. She makes really interesting art pieces, and the talks on the podcast are just so freaking relatable and just so heartwarming in a way you know like you can just feel like you're in the room with them like they're your best friends or whatever it's really cool I highly recommend it so yeah I was listening to it while I was creating this owl piece and I mean it that podcast really puts you in a calm state of mind and I had like all day to work on this even though I didn't take all day it actually I think this owl only took me an hour to do, but I was, I don't know, something about having more time, even if you don't end up using all of that time, just makes you feel so much more at ease and able to make great work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget that I have an Instagram. It's called Macy Lou Brown, all one word, and I have a Patreon page, and thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Bye.